All right, we're taking a look at Velvet Buzzsaw. We did the trailer reaction. We, of course, liked Buzzsaw. How can you not? Uh, we were a little concerned that even though it is about sort of horror art, it might be artsy-fartsy. So, finally seen it? Let's find out. All right, I gotta warn everybody in advance, this is gonna be a spoiler-filled review, so if you haven't seen it yet, fire up Netflix and check it out. All right, you're here. So, to make sure we're all on the same page, basically, uh, revolves around a bunch of people in the art world, and uh, one young woman has a neighbor die. And turns out that he's these wacko jacko artists who use blood for paint. Man, hilarity ensues. All right, we start with likes. And this is going to sound completely bizarre. But really the main thing that I liked about this was the art. And so let's kind of clarify that. So you're going to make a movie, uh, and, you know, granted it's been done a, a few times before. Not, not to death, but it's been done a few times before. Wherein, you know, there's this twisted, bizarro world art, and it's influencing the, the real world. The trick with that is, you know, you, you have to have some real artist produce the real art that's really, you know, convincing that it could be just from an insane mind or an occult mind or, you know, whatever the, the plot of the film is. And they actually did do a really good job. I mean, the, the, the works by the artist, really, I'm convinced, you know, could you had that creepy, you know, scary vibe. It was very, very well done. Um, you know, even though it was a sort of a cheap plot device for some, some, some bad gore, uh, the, the sphere, you know, art thing was actually kind of interesting. I... I really am not into the whole artsy fartsy scene. Um, this movie kind of touched on a little bit of how you know pretentious and vapid and empty and, and forced meaning that that world really is, but didn't really get into it. So I can't really say that was a like. Um, but uh, you know, if you're gonna have that as the central theme of your movie, you, you gotta have the good art, and they definitely. Uh, had the good art in this one, so I will give them props for that. All right, it's dislikes time, and unfortunately, this is one of these movies where you don't really finish it just hating and loathing it um, because it's all very well done and very well acted, and everything is kind of A to B to C. Uh, you know, plot holes aren't too glaring, but they're definitely there. However, one huge dislike, continuing theme, is the damn CGI blood. It's terrible. Uh, you know, it's always been terrible, there's no reason for it, and it was fully on display here. Um, yeah, like, okay, you know, you're gonna have a scene where, like, the paint, you know, takes over some woman, that's CGI, I get that, that's understood. But, you know, you know, uh, you know, Tony Collette's putting her arm in the thing, and then, you know, it's ripping off, and there's blood, and, but that was all digital, CGI. I dare say even her lying on the floor was, was digital, I mean, it just... Uh, you know, it, just, it does not, they just, either they're not putting in the money, or just it isn't there yet, it does not look real. So I will continue my begging and pleading to voices, or to voices, Jesus, to ears that are closed, stop using CGI blood. Alright, it is pinhead time, and uh, honestly, you know, as I said, this wasn't a terrible movie, you didn't dislike it. Uh, but the CGI blood was just too much of a turnoff. Too much of a turnoff. Um, you know, I can't just say, you know, avoid it at every cost, but as it stands, it's going to be a one pinhead movie. Uh, but what about the buzzsaw, you say? Yeah, so apparently it is the name of a punk band that uh, Rene Russo's character was in in the 80s, and it's also used as the final bad CGI blood effect. That's why I didn't mention it. But are you guys going to mention it? If so, in the comments, please.